Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to continue with our mining simulator game by adding a feature that whenever you destroy a rock, it'll show up in a new location. So let's go ahead and check it out. Okay, so I just broke the rock, and if we look over here, we can see that it showed up in a new location. Okay, I broke that one, and there it is over here. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we're going to do is add two folders into the workspace. The first one is going to be called Rocks, and the second one is going to be called Rock Locations. Inside of this first folder that we called Rocks, we're going to store our rock, and we only need one rock inside of this folder because we're going to be writing a script that will make different copies of it. So this should be the rock that we wrote before with our sound, our script, and our health GUI. What we're going to do is we're going to make a copy of this rock. So you can either right click and then press duplicate, or you can use control D on the keyboard. After you make the copy of the rock, you're going to rename it. And for this one, I'm just going to add POS to the end, which is going to be short for position. After you rename it, you're going to open it up and delete everything inside of it. Once you delete all the items inside of it, we're going to move it into the rock locations folder. So what we're going to do with all the rocks inside of this folder, these are going to be different possible locations for the rock to go once it's destroyed. I made a couple from before, so let me go ahead and just change the transparency on those. So as you can see, I set up some different locations for the rock to spawn into. You can create as many of these as you want to. While you're testing, it might be a good idea to leave these visible so you can see what's going on. If you want to make more copies of these items right here, then you can just click on one inside the folder and then duplicate it. And then you can move it to wherever else you want to. Inside each of these parts, we're going to be adding a bool value. So you can just click on this right here. We're going to be renaming this bool value to free. And then you want to make sure it's checked to start out with. What I would recommend doing so that you don't have to manually add this for each rock is just start with one rock like this here. Go ahead and add that value and get it renamed. And then once you do that, then just duplicate this rock. Once you do that, it's going to have that free value already inside of it. Okay, so after you add all the different possible locations you want for your rock, we're going to go ahead and add a script into the first folder that should be called rocks. Inside of this script, we're going to start with a variable. We're going to say local rock is equal to script.parent. So script.parent will get us up to this folder here. And then we want to reference this rock right here, which we can do by saying dot rock. Okay, and the next thing we're going to do is get all the children inside of the second folder, this folder right here. To do that, we're going to say local, and then our variable name is going to be rock locations. This is going to be equal to game.workspace dot rock locations, which is the name of the folder. And then to get all the items inside the folder, we're going to say colon and get children. We also want to know how many items are inside this folder. So we're going to store that inside of a variable called num locations. And we're going to set this equal to the hashtag or number sign. And then we're going to say rock locations, which corresponds to this variable right here. So this part right here is getting all the children inside the folder. And this variable right here is going to store the number of items inside that folder. Next, we're going to be using a for loop to create copies of the rock and place it inside the different possible locations. To do that, we're going to start with the number 1 and go all the way up to the number of items inside the folder, minus 1. The reason we're doing minus 1 is so that there's a spot for the rock to go once it breaks. After that, we're going to be creating a copy of the rock. So we're going to say local rock clone. And this is going to be equal to rock colon clone. So this is going to make a copy of it. And then we're going to set its parent, which is its location inside the Explorer menu. So we're going to set its parent equal to script.parent. So since our script is right here, script.parent is going to be inside this folder. And then we're going to set its position. So we're going to say rock clone dot position. And this is going to be equal to rock locations. So this is going to be the table that contains all the different possible locations. And then we're going to say at the current iteration. So if this is the first time through the loop, we're going to take rock locations at the first item and get its position. The second time through this loop, place will be equal to 2. So down here, it would be saying take the second item inside this folder. 
And likewise for the third one, once it gets down to this point, it would be taking the third item inside this folder here and getting its position. So we're taking our rock clone and setting it at each position, except for the last one since we said minus one. And then what we also want to do whenever we're setting it at these different locations is set the free value equal to false so that we know that this position is taken. After we do that, we don't need our rock anymore, so we're just going to say rock, colon, and destroy. Okay, so the simple version of this is we're taking a rock, which we did the scripting for, we're making copies of it, and just setting it at different locations inside the folder. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out and make sure it works. Okay, so now you can see we have copies of our rocks in all the different possible locations except for one. So what we want to do next is make it whenever a player breaks this rock, it'll choose a new location out of the possible locations. Before we move on though, if you want to leave more possible locations open, you can increase this number right here. So if I set it at the number three, then whenever it makes the copies, it's going to leave three spaces open. Okay, so we can see when it spawned in the rocks, it left three possible locations open. And the reason you might want to do something like this is because when a player breaks a rock, it'll make the new location seem more random. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is modify the script that should be inside the rock. Okay, so inside the script, we're going to start writing code right below this line right here. Once you start writing the code, you can go ahead and delete this line because we're not going to be using it anymore. For this new script, we're going to start with a variable. We're going to say local current POS is going to be equal to rock.position. So we're getting the current position of the rock that we're hitting. After that, we're going to create a variable that we're going to use later on. So for now, we get to say local current place is equal to nil. We're going to loop through all the different rocks inside of the possible locations. And we're going to check to see if the current position of the rock is equal to one of the possible locations inside this folder. And if we find that that's true, then we're going to set the variable current place equal to the place. So the way this is going to work, let's say my rock is inside of this one right here. Then when it goes through and sees that the position of this one and this one are the same, then it's going to set the variable current place equal to this rock right here. After that, we're going to be looping through this folder again. This time we're going to be checking to see which rock is free. And that would mean that this value right here is true. If we find that, then what we're going to do is we're going to take our rock and set its position equal to whichever one of these is open. After that, we're going to set the value equal to false so that we know this place is taken. And then finally down here, we're going to take our current place and we're going to set its free value back to true. And this would occur whenever the rock breaks and moves to a new location. So let's say it starts here and moves to this one. We would want to make sure that we set this position back open to free so that another rock could take its place. Okay, after we do that, we need to reset swings left back to 10. And then we also need to reset the health bar, which is what we're doing right here. Okay, so a simplified version of that, this part right here is recording whichever position we're at. This one right here is looking for a new location that's not taken. This part right here is taking whichever position we left and setting it back to open. And these two lines down here are resetting the health bar so it appears full again. All right, so let's go ahead and try out the code and make sure it works. Okay, and before I actually break it, if we check inside rock locations at one of the locations that's taken, we should see that the free value is equal to false or unchecked. And if I check a different one that doesn't have a rock, the free value should be equal to true or have a check mark. All right, so let's go ahead and break this rock and see where it goes. And it should go in either one of the three empty locations, so either here, here, or this one over here. Okay, so we saw that it broke from this one right here and went to the back one. And if we check this one right here, the free value should be true again. Okay, so we can see that it's checked, so we know this is true. And then whenever another rock breaks, it's possible it could go into this one. Okay, and we can see that one broke and went in a different location because we still have three open spots. Okay, and it looks like we have a slight problem occurring. So even though I broke this rock right here, the crystal appeared in this location over here. So let's see if we can fix that real quick. Okay, and the problem occurs right here. So before we were manually setting the position of the rock, so it was okay to take the position at the very beginning. But since we're moving these rocks around, we don't want to take the position of the rock right away. We want to wait until it's broken. So I'm going to delete that variable. And instead, since we're taking the position of the rock right here, whenever the rock breaks, I'll just use that one instead. 
So we're going to take current position. And down here where we set the position of the crystal, we're going to change that to current position. All right, so let's go ahead and test it out and see if that fixes the issue. Okay, so the crystal appeared right there. Let's try another one. All right, so everything looks good. Okay, so once you see that everything's working, you can now make these possible locations invisible. And you can do that quickly by just highlighting all the different rocks inside the folder, going down to transparency and setting it equal to one. And now let's go ahead and try it out and see how it looks. Okay, so we have four different rocks and then we should have three open positions. And there we go, so it showed up in a new location right over here. Okay, and before we end with this video, a couple people mentioned that whenever they swing with the axe, it wasn't always registering as a hit. Something that you can do to try to fix that is inside the pickaxe where we wrote the script. You can increase this number right here that we have for the wait time. I found that if you make it too large, however, that you might get double hits, but you can experiment with increasing and decreasing this number to see if it helps. For now though, this is going to be the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed, and stay tuned for the next one.